Hello, welcome to lesson number 11. Uh, we're getting close, guys. We're almost through. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the two commandments. Uh, so last week, we talked about the Great Commission. Today, we're talking about the two great commandments that Jesus gave us. So we're going to be in Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. Okay, for starters, it can be really easy to try and overcomplicate being a Christian. Um, you know, you start really diving into God's Word and really trying to understand Him and trying to wrap your mind around Him, it can get really complicated. I mean, just thinking about like the idea of the Trinity, you know, God being three in one, or, or how Jesus was God and man at the same time, and it can, just trying to wrap your head around that can be, can be really tough. Um, and so what we have to remember is that Jesus said even a child could come to Him and believe. In fact, He said that we need to have faith like children. Um, so when we read God's word and we think about his character, we need to realize that even the deepest we could ever study, we can only ever at best scratch the surface of who God is. So sometimes following him can, can seem really tough. It can seem like a daunting task. Um, but Jesus made it really simple for us. He gave us two great commandments that sort of encompass all of God's laws, right? Uh, he, he made it really simple for us. Um, and if you can learn to do these two things, to really do these two things, then you will keep all of God's laws and not have to be worried about it. So first, let's do a little bit of background before we read our passage. Matthew 22, uh, we get Jesus' teaching about these two great commandments. Now remember, context is super important. Context is key, okay? Um, when we, we can't just read something in isolation. We need to kind of understand what's going on. So what's going on in Matthew 22, right? Uh, before we read uh, the two commandments, we got to get the background. The Pharisees are coming to Jesus with these trick questions. Okay, uh, the Pharisees were constantly asking Jesus basically these like trick questions to try and catch him saying or doing something that they could say, Ah, see, this guy isn't really the Son of God. Right? That was their whole deal. So they would ask him these like trick questions or these weird like hypothetical situations to try and you know trip him up. And you have to understand that hypotheticals are what the Pharisees do. This is their whole thing, okay? Hypothetical situations, that is their bread and butter. The Pharisees kind of, I can't believe I'm about to say this, the Pharisees kind of get a bad rap sometimes, okay? Um, here's the deal. They were passionate about making sure that they taught people how to follow God's law, right? The, the, the Old Testament law, the Torah. They were like really, really zealous and passionate about teaching people how to follow God's law. And so what they would do was they wanted to make sure that you knew how to follow God's law uh, in every possible situation, okay? So what they would do is they, they would sit around under a tree or something, and they would think of these, like, hypothetical scenarios, right? These, you know, uh, and they would say, okay, well, how would you follow God in this situation, okay? And so they would ask all these, like, you know, really, really, they would come up with a situation. They're, okay, okay, how do we follow God's law if this happens. Now, like I said, sometimes the Pharisees get a bad rap. Um, and, you know, honestly, when you read the Gospels, deservedly so. Um, but I think that their intentions started out good. Okay? Um, they wanted to help people follow God in everyday life. Right? In fact, that's actually, that's a really good thing. Unfortunately, that what happened is they became so focused on the law that they kind of sleep, slipped into what we call legalism. Okay, and legalism is the idea that I'm not really I'm, I don't really love God. I'm not following God's laws out of love. I'm following it because I want to make sure that I just keep the rules, right? Um, and when, when their focus became on the law and, and not on God, and so what happened is when the Messiah was standing right in front of them, they couldn't recognize him. I mean, how could they not recognize him? They've dedicated their whole life to his law and reading his scriptures. And then when he's, he himself, the word himself made flesh is standing right in front of them, they can't see him. So what you have to understand is that the questions they're asking on this day to Jesus, um, they, they are designed in such a way that they can prove, they're trying to prove that Jesus is a fraud, that he's not actually the Messiah. So they bring out a Pharisee who is an expert in the law. Uh, they're bringing out the big guns to see if they can trip up Jesus. So let's read uh, verses 34 through 36. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together. And one of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest, which command in the law is the greatest? So 
So what's happening here is they think that they've come up with the best trick question to prove that Jesus isn't really the Messiah. They bring out this guy. He's a, he's an expert in the law. Uh, this guy probably has the first five books of the Old Testament. He probably has them like memorized. Okay, um, and I mean that literally, word for word, from start to finish, memorized. This guy is an expert in the law. So they're bringing out the big guns here. They're bringing out the guy who is going to trip up Jesus. And what is the question you ask him? He says, "Which law?" is the greatest. Which command in the law is the greatest? Basically what he's asking is a trick question. If Jesus says, well, this law is the greatest, he says, ah, well, what about this other law? You don't think that's important? How can you be the Messiah and not think that this is important? Right? He's trying to trick Jesus, trip Jesus up. And in verse 37, Jesus gives the answer that the Shema is the greatest commandment. Now we've read this actually a couple other times, right? Um, but Jesus answers by quoting the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 4 and 5. Now the Shema uh, is the Hebrew word for hear because the first word of the passage is listen, right? Uh, listen, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. Shema is the Hebrew word. That's why it's called the Shema, right? Now this is quite possibly uh, the most popular and well-known passage of Scripture from the Old Testament. Every Hebrew living in Jesus' day would have had this memorized. It was basically the John 3.16 of the Old Testament, okay? And that's why Jesus' answer is so genius, right? Listen to what he says in verse 37. He said to them, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. This is a brilliant answer on Jesus' part. How could this not be the greatest law? He's quoting straight from the Old Testament, you know, greatest passage in the Old Testament, the one that everybody loves, everybody knows. He hits the nail on the head. The greatest commandment in all of Scripture is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. It was true when, Mo when it was written in Moses' time. It's true when Jesus said it, and it's true for us today. Above all, above everything else, we must love the Lord. And then there's actually a second command. Jesus says not only is that the greatest commandment, in typical Jesus fashion, he takes it up a notch, right? He says there's actually a second great commandment. And he says this in verse 39. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now again, Jesus is quoting from the Old Testament here. And he's doing it to a guy who's an expert in the law, right? Uh, the passage he's referring to tells people how to live together in a godly lifestyle. It can be summed up in the phrase, love your neighbor as yourself. So, obviously the question is, you know, who's my neighbor? Well, let's talk about it. You can start by loving your actual neighbors, right? I know a lot of times we say, well, it's not like literally your neighbor. Your neighbor could be anybody that you come. How about, what if we actually, as Christians, out in our neighborhoods and in our communities, what if we actually loved our neighbors? Now, I know that's not always possible. Not, not everybody's neighbors are friendly. Not everybody's neighbors, you know, are, are very talkative, right? I, I've tried to talk to some of my neighbors and I don't want to talk, right? Um, you know, it might not always be possible, but I mean, think about it. God put you right next door to these people. You didn't pick these people. You know, you had no control over who moved into the house across the street or next door to you. You know, you had zero say in that. God put you by these people. If you can find ways to show your actual neighbors Christian love, that's an opportunity to minister. It's an opportunity to share the gospel right there, right literally in your front yard, right? But more broadly speaking, your neighbor is anybody that you come into contact with, right? People you work with, acquaintances, uh, who you see on a regular basis, or just the people you bump into here or there. All these people are your neighbors, right? So Jesus says the greatest commandment is to love God, but the second greatest commandment is, is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. He says that on these two things, all the law is taken care of. Check it out in verse 40. He says all the law and prophets depend on these two commands. Remember who asked this question? An expert in the law, right? This guy, this guy knew the Old Testament inside and out. And foolishly, they thought that they were going to ask Jesus some trick question and they were going to make him look silly. I mean, not, not a great plan, you guys. Um, and this guy may have been an expert in the law, but Jesus is the one who wrote it. Okay? He wrote the law. He outsmarts the question. And he says that all the law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. I mean, really think about it. The law, the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. The prophets are all the books of the prophets from the Old Testament. He's essentially saying that all of the Old Testament is wrapped up in these two commandments. If you truly love God and love your neighbor, 
you will keep all the laws in Scripture. So what does this mean for us today? Well, it's simple. I mean, think about if you really love God, you're not going to worship other gods, right? You're not going to break commitments to Him. If you truly love God, like truly love Him with all your heart, you're going to serve Him obediently. And if you truly love your neighbor, if you actually love the people around you, you're not going to lie, you're not going to steal, you're not going to hurt people, you're not going to be cruel to people, you're not going to not forgive people. If you actually love others, you don't have to worry about keeping all the laws because the greatest law is love. If we love God and we love others, then we, I mean, truly love them, then we are keeping His commands.